Hey, guys, welcome to the video called Jerry here. And today we're going to talk about how can you still eat your carbohydrates, seven ways you can include your carbs, even if you are insulin resistant, type 2 diabetic, or, or you have metabolic syndrome. Why is this important? I believe because there is no one size fits all, despite getting on YouTube and seeing doctor after doctor telling you that the only way to go is fasting uh, or going to low carb or keto. But it's important to understand exactly what your case looks like. Okay, personally, I am insulin resistant at the level of the brain, in addition to being in the level of the liver and muscle. And especially you have um, this, when, when you have such complex case that you have insulin resistance multiple places, uh, you will have uh, issues such as not only physiological issue, but you will have biochemical issue, okay? And what it looks like is that somebody that can uh, control well cravings, that means that you will probably be insulin resistant uh, at the level of the muscle only, uh, or maybe in the liver as well, you would do very well in things such as keto or such as fasting. But, uh, and again, when it comes to improve your insulin resistance, reverse your insulin resistance, there is really two things you have to do. Improve your uh, overall environment and behavior, losing weight, okay? And that includes creating a sustainable calorie deficit while maintaining your hormones so that you're not hungry all the time so that you can sustain uh, the changes over time. And third, uh, you have to keep your blood balanced, okay? Doesn't mean that you have to be your blood super low, you just have to keep your blood balanced, okay? And again, if you have um, issues such as being insulin resistant at the level of the brain, uh, as I share on my screen here, you would see this situation happen, okay? Uh, this doesn't happen when you are insulin resistant at the level of the muscle. You will not deal with uh, hormones such as uh, the, the counter insulin or hormone, meaning like if you fast, for example, right, and your insulin, your cell gets sensitized really quickly, you will not struggle with this, right? But in my case, I fast, let's say six, seven hours in addition to what I'm supposed to fast, right? And I would start seeing my blood sugar spikes because it's due from the, the production of this hormone, you know, growth hormone, cortisol, epinephrine, glucagon. And as you can see, all this interaction of the hormone together are much stronger than the action of the insulin. So if I eat too many sweets, I would get blood spikes from insulin. If I eat not nothing, I will get blood spikes regardless, okay? Because of the stress that these approaches uh, will give to my physiology. And on top of that, I would then be more proponent to, I, I will end up, um, I will end up on, on, on cravings. I will, I will basically end up ruining my diet. And therefore, it's, it's there to, to see that an approach such as fasting doesn't work. So this is why there are really a few strategies that really work, but it's not one size fits all. You know, there is low carb or keto, but again, this varies from, you know, 100 grams of carbs to 20 grams of carbs. There is fasting, some of them they do really well, multiple day fasting, there is intermittent fasting, but then there is this way to eat that you eat multiple times. You split off very lower energy uh, meals, meaning like lower in calories meals, instead of eating a big meal of 1000 calories, you, you eat multiple meals of 200 calories, which includes some carbs, for example, right? And so this, what it does to your insulin, it keeps producing small, level of insulin so you, you kind of like uh, re-educate your, your cells on on producing the insulin the correct way this should be paired of course on, on moving it should be paired on exercising it's not something that that is just something that you can do uh, by that one of the big mistakes i see all the time is basically the the idea that you can take a few supplements and this is going to fix your problem but how can we then include carbohydrates what are the way the best way to include carbohydrates this is a few uh, ways that you can do it, and, and I'll be interested on, on the end of the of the video here. If you tell me how do you eat your car, if you learn anything at all, if you're planning to implement these strategies, and again, you should implement either few these strategies all the time or maybe one at a time. You don't want to do everything together if you never done it because if you never eat carbs and if you went to keto and then you start eating carb together, you will end up essentially in uh, in still. Uh, having a big response from your body, especially in weight gain, which is usually from water, okay? And this is another important part is that if you keep, if you gain weight, it's not necessarily that you're getting fat, it might be from water. Rule number one or way number one is, 
is actually not this. Let me just stop sharing for a second. The rule number one that I wanted to talk about, and this is something you might or might not have heard, is the idea of eating carbohydrates to cold or cooking it in different ways. This, if you hit sweet potato uh, after it's cool, after cooled an hour after, you would see a very less uh, of an impact when it comes to blood sugar ri rises or spikes. Secondly, when you cook your pasta, for example, there is this thermic shock that you can have. You, you cook your pasta, whatever pasta you choose to cook, right? And then you, when, you, when, you, when, when, it, when it boils and you take it off from the, from, from, the, from the pan, you will use cold water right away. So you, you give a thermic shock to that. You obviously, you need to heat it cold with maybe some vegetable after with some tuna or something of that nature. And it's important to use that because it will match, it will give a, a really different impact to, to your, your uh, glycemic load and glycemic index. You know, be mindful that you need to look at glycemic load and glycemic index, not just glycemic index. One of these days I will do a video about that. And this is very important for you to understand um, this particular uh, situation. Secondly, do not eat carbs alone. Never eat carbs alone. Uh, eat usually, and this is an example, obviously, of very tasty food. And I give this example because I'll, I'll explain why you should, um, you should do it this way. French toast, one of the worst food you, you could eat if you eat the regular French toast. If you learn how to cook good French toast, you get a good, uh, maybe almond flour or something of that nature. You add some uh, you had some white eggs in there or full eggs. You had some, um, uh, you can even add low calorie uh, maple syrup. You can add Greek yogurt. You can add um, sweeteners, like good, good like xylitol is a very good sweetener you can add. This will give a very low impact. When you add protein, you add fat, healthy fat and protein to your carbs, it will give a very a, a much lower impact to your blood sugar. It will keep you, uh, feel for longer. It will take away your cravings. And usually if this is like a thousand calorie, when you, when you cook it in a healthy way, like I just described, without butter, without sugar, without those, those too much fruit, like you would have a meal of 300 to 500 calories. They will keep, they will keep, um, they will keep you full for longer. If you want a link to the recipe, uh, just comment down below recipe. I will, I will personally tag you uh, to get the, the, the recipe of, the, of my French toast uh, that you can find. It's, it's one of the meals that you find nowadays uh, several ways. Now, um, the, it's very important for you to understand this one because this allows you to, to get a lot of um, margin for, for that. The other one, do not heat carb first, okay? Tend to eat your carbs last. Put your protein first, with your vegetable and some healthy fruits such as berry first, and then eat your starches last. You know, even if you're eating your starches, you're gonna have much more blood balance because of, of, of the protein first, and you will be able to also be more full like before. It's all, a, it's all an idea of you being able to, um, to maintain the, your hunger and cravings such that you don't feel like, like it, it's, it's gonna be uh, an, a matter of how many carbs you eat. Okay, so if you're able to not eat them too much or not to, you know, not first, you will not feel like binging on carbohydrates. Okay. Now the next one is do not drink them. This is goes for the pop. You know, like if you really have to eat drink pop, just eat you know, diet pop. But do not drink sugar. Do not drink juice. Do not drink shakes unless it's a protein shake with some healthy fat, uh, or in, in, in unless you put some, let's say some, some real strawberry in there or some fruit into the shake, but do not just shake everything down, take off, or especially in juices, you take off all the fiber. So get your fiber together, eat, eat, the, whole, eat the fruit instead. Like eat the fruit instead. It will, it will probably make you, uh, you know, more full for longer. Uh, and again, a lot of people vilify fruit, uh, but if you eat too much fruit, it will com the fructose will convert easier in, in fat than what glucose does. But, uh, you know, again, calorie-wise, it's much better that you, that you get that than, than, um, than anything else, okay? Now, uh, the next one, it's really going to be about talking about the quality of carbohydrates, okay? 
as we go back here, anything that you, anything that you find carb-wise that has either Kamud bread or ancient, ancient grains, like you can look up what ancient grains are, there are several things that you can buy, and you cook with those things are gonna be a lot less impactful when it comes to your physiology, okay? And for some of these things, they're even beneficial on really uh, helping your cells um, really understand what, 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 what you need to like, uh, understand how to process better carbohydrate, okay? Now, the other one, uh, which, which is really important, is get them in small snacks. Like I said before, do not, like everybody's different and you don't know, and it's not about what you're eating now and what your blood sugar looks like 20 minutes from now. Uh, in, in a sense, like you might wanna be aware of that, but like it's important for you to understand how carb overhaul they, they do long-term. Now, it, it works a lot for a lot of people, like especially when you're insulin resistant, doing small snacks. And obviously if you can include some, some carbohydrates in each snack, or in some of those, wheat fat, as I said before, uh, will, de will be detrimental on your lowering of your glycemic load in general, which is the amount of carbohydrates that you have inside your diet. And will also be very beneficial when it comes to the, um, uh, like, it's not about how many carb you hit, it's how many carb you absorb. So for the absorption of the carb, it's gonna be beneficial to hit them in smaller, sittings instead of hitting like a huge sitting at times, okay? And the last one, it's really about learning how to taper your carbohydrates, okay? It's going to be, and this is like fundamentally right for everybody, it's going to be about how many grams you're able to eat in a certain day and process, meaning like if you are already working out or if you're not, if you're walking or if you're not walking, uh, what you do after you hit your carbohydrates, but essentially you need to understand how much can you get away with? And because at the end of the day, they all turn into sugar. They will all turn into sugar. It's only a matter of how long will it take. So you do need to have a sense of what can you process with uh, as far as your body. And therefore, it's important for you to, um, to, to, to understand all these rules and implement. This last rule is probably one of the difficult ones. So I want you to start with everything else first. Understanding how many, the quantity you need is going to take a little bit. Uh, but like the other one, you can start implementing right away. If you are in a place that you don't know what to do anymore, like if you're doing keto or if you're doing harder protocols and it doesn't work because you have a family, you cannot cook for everybody. Or if you do, if you've done everything that you could, but you have no idea where to start, uh, click down below. Uh, actually, don't click them. Like comment down below assessment. I will personally uh, send you an, an assessment, a form in which I will audit your current situation and tell you what the best steps are strategy-wise. What is the strategy you can start using from today to start reversing your insulin resistance? Jerry here. Talk to you soon.